Hi guys and welcome to this training session where we're going to have a look at how we can really improve the comfort and efficiency of your heating system by upgrading to multi-room control with Wiser. Wiser is Drayton's smart connected heating control which allows you to only heat the rooms you want to heat when you want to heat them by using the smart radiator thermostats which are wireless and can be fitted retrospectively to the radiators in your property. To fit Wiser, your existing time controller is replaced with the Wiser hub, which allows it to manage the devices that are on the network and also connect the internet to benefit from cloud services. There are three versions of the hub and you pick the one which is most suited to your current installation, either a combi boiler, a system boiler with stored hot water or even a system that's already been partially zoned using zone valves. So for a combi boiler system like this that's being controlled by a programmable room stat, the Wiser Multi-Zone Kit 1 is the perfect choice. The first thing we need to do is we need to remove the old receiver from its backplate. So you do this by undoing the two screws underneath and lifting off of the backplate. The Wiser hub R that you get in the Multi-Zone Kit 1 is single channel, so the wiring arrangement is exactly the same and it fits on the same backplate. Clip it on at the top and do up the screws underneath. The old programmable room stat can then be removed and replaced with the wiser room stat or you can just run on smart radiator thermostats alone. It's entirely up to you. So we're now at the stage where we need to do some work on the smartphone. So download the wiser app, hit the get started button and then pick the wiser hub R and it will tell you then to press the setup button once. And this is to start it broadcasting a soft access point for us to connect to. And a quick click of the button should see the indicator start flashing green as shown here. Back into the Wiser app and we can hit the next button and we see we're invited to open our Wi-Fi settings. This takes you to the system menu of your phone and you just need to navigate to the Wi-Fi section and you're looking for the access point called Wiser. You can see here Wiser 25. We click on it, we get told that it's an unsecured network and also that there's no internet connection and that's absolutely fine as we are connecting to this to configure it, not go on the internet. Once the connection is stable, we can background the settings and foreground the Wiser app and you can see the continue button is now livened up. So we click that and it now confirms you have a connection to the hub and you can now progress on to the first configuration page, which is the details of your boiler. And once that's set, you can then hit next where it will ask you to set up your Wi-Fi connection. Now, as we're an installer, we're not going to bother with this. So we'll hit skip. You get the prompt to say, are you sure you want to do this? To which we can hit continue. And we then leave that for the homeowner to set up at their leisure. We then get invited to add devices to the network, which is what we want to do. So here we ignore the skip button and we hit next. And that takes us into a landing page where we can choose which devices it is we want to add to the system. And to begin with, we'll start with a room thermostat. So click on the room thermostat button and we are given the instructions to install the batteries into our Wiser smart room thermostat. So we'll begin by flipping the stat over and removing the battery covers and insert the batteries. Make sure you put the covers back on, otherwise the batteries have a tendency to fall out. And once they're on, flip over, you get the Wiser splash screen and then immediately it goes into join mode. And before long, it gives you a temperature indicating that it's joined the network. Back to the app and whilst you're putting the batteries in, the app is showing you this screen. As soon as the room thermostat powers up, the app will pair. And there you see that you get the message to say that it's now been joined. The next step is to assign it to a room. And you can choose whether you're going to put it on the table stand or have it wall mounted. So pop your room name in and once you've finished hit the done button and you'll get the confirmation that the room's been created and then it will revert back to that landing page again where you're ready to add your next device. 
So the next device we're going to add is going to be our radiator thermostat. And before we do anything on the app, the first thing we must do is insert the batteries into the smart radiator thermostat, because what this will do is it will make it open. So pop your batteries in, you'll then get the red light to indicate that it's opening. You'll feel the motor run and you can see that the plunger inside is being withdrawn into the body. And then you get into this condition, red and blue flashing with amber in the middle. This means it's in calibration mode and it's ready to join. Next, we remove the mechanical TRV that we're going to replace this with, and we choose the appropriate adapters. In this case, it's the M30 by one and a half. So this is the two part adapter. Black ring goes on with the serrations down, and then the chrome ring goes over the top and tighten it down finger tight. Now, the valve, remember, in calibration mode, so it's wide open, will easily screw on, and you screw it down until you feel the O-ring touch the adapter, and then there's about another half a turn. And then if you want to get the indicators facing forward, don't back it off on the adapter, loosen off the locking ring, and edge it around on one of those 72 serrations. We're now at the stage where we can add it to the system. So back into the Wiser app, and this time pick radiator thermostat. And then the app will give you instructions to twist the cap and hold to the plus position until the amber light starts pulsing green. After a few seconds, the green light will stop pulsing and go solid. And then the head will be restored to red and blue flashing, meaning it's ready to calibrate. Back in the app, once the head is joined, you get the message to say fit it to the valve body if you haven't already done it, and then go through the calibration process, which we will do once we've assigned this head to its zone. So hit next, and we can either add to an existing zone, but in this case, I'm going to define a new zone. And once you've hit done, you'll be returned to the landing page as before. Back to the smart radiator valve, and we'll now go through the calibration process by holding the cap to the minus until you feel it start to move and then let go. And the plunger is now being driven down and it will calibrate to the valve body. Always need to make sure that everything is nice and tight before you complete this step. So I've now gone through and added more zones to the system, each with their own devices. And you can see from the overview screen, you get a readout of what each zone is doing. You can see what the set point is. You can see what the schedule is doing. If you click on any one of the zones, you can then go in and make ad hoc changes to the temperature. This is also where you access the schedule from. Now, this is programmable room start theory, where you're setting time and temperature events throughout the day. And each zone that you have will have its own separate schedule. Now, from the home screen, if you click in the top left-hand corner, you'll access the settings menu. And it's from here that you're able to view the devices that you've got on the network. So we can see here that we've got the hub. Now it's telling us that there's poor Wi-Fi, but that's because we're connecting to it directly. We haven't yet set up the Wi-Fi, so there's no issue there. We can also see that we've got a room thermostat, which is assigned to the lounge. And we've also got radiator thermostats on the bedroom, dining room and kitchen. And this is telling us what the battery life is. Also, if we had any issues here where devices are dropped off the network, we'd easily be able to see it as they would be flagged. Now, in this scenario, we've got a room thermostat, which is covering the lounge area. And then we've got radiator thermostats on the bedroom, dining room and kitchen. Now, you need to remember that the room thermostats cannot control flow. So if any one of those other zones comes into an on period, the boiler is going to kick in and it's going to heat the lounge radiators as there's nothing there to prevent flow into them. So by having a room stat in this zone, we can ensure that it doesn't drop below a certain temperature, but we can't stop it going above what the set point is. For that, we need to control flow. And for that, we need smart radiator thermostats. Now here I want to talk about how we arrange devices on the network. Now you can see here we've got a setup where there is no room thermostat. And that's absolutely fine because each radiator thermostat can do everything that you need it to do. It can measure the ambient temperature in the room. It can permit or restrict flow by being able to open the radiator valve. But critically, and this is where it moves away from traditional mechanical thermostatic radiator valves, it's got the capability to call for heat. So if you were to go on to that zone on the app, or if you were to use the in-home controls, so by twisting the cap on the top 
of the radiator valve. Not only is the valve going to open and respond to what the ambient temperature is, it's also going to send a signal to fire up the boiler. And this makes for a really discreet way of heating your home because the only controls you have are actually on the radiators themselves. Now, given that these need good airflow over them in order to estimate what the temperature is in the room, it could be that if you've got furniture or long curtains or anything that's going to impede that airflow, that the TRVs are going to over or under read. So you're going to lose a little bit of accuracy when you look at the app. Now, there is a way around that, and that's by adding a room thermostat into the same zone as the TRV. So we hit the plus button in the bottom right hand corner and choose the room thermostat option and go through exactly the same process as we did before to add in a room thermostat. But this time, rather than assigning it to a new zone, we can choose a zone to assign it to. So if our problematic zone is the bedroom, we click on bedroom and you've now got the architecture where in the bedroom we've got both a radiator thermostat and a room thermostat. The radiator thermostat now is purely controlling flow and any decisions that are being made on temperature are as per what the bedroom room thermostat is measuring. So let's take another scenario where we have two radiators in the same zone. So you can see here there are two Wiser Smart radiator thermostats that have been assigned to the kitchen. And the reason we would want to do that is that we're trying to control a zone as opposed to controlling individual radiators. Now you can have up to four smart radiator thermostats per any one zone. And you can also reassign where they are. So in this case, I shall take the radiator thermostat out of the dining room and I'll then assign it to the kitchen. So we've now got three radiator thermostats in the kitchen, each one that's reporting temperature for its own area, but that's being averaged by the hub. Now, if we want to centralise the sensing, there's nothing stopping us adding a room thermostat to this. So as before, tell it to expect to see it, pop the batteries in, add the room thermostat to the kitchen, and now you can see all of our devices are in the kitchen. So we've actually got four devices in there, but in terms of control, only the temperature reported by the room thermostat is being act acted upon. The other three radiator thermostats are purely flow control devices that are being controlled by that room thermostat. Next up, I want to talk about some of the smart modes you get with Wiser. So again, by pressing on the top left and going into settings, we've got our smart modes. Now these comprise of eco mode, which is essentially optimal stop, which makes adjustments to the end timings of your schedule in accordance with the weather data that's fed in from when the customer registers their postcode as part of the registration and pairing journey. Next up, we have comfort mode, and this can be considered optimal start. So whereas traditionally you would set your heating to come on before you get up in the morning, this takes the guesswork out. So what you say is I want X temperature at X time, and the control then works out when it needs to come on in order so that you've fulfilled set point by your desired time. Wiser also features away mode, which is essentially a quick way of applying a blanket temperature across all of your zones. So here I'm setting my set point to seven degrees. And then when I go in on the automation page and I toggle away mode on, it applies that seven degree set point across all of my zones without me having to go in there and do it manually. And then upon return, away mode can simply be toggled off and all of the zones will go back and do what they were doing before, either following the schedule or back to manual mode. Lastly, we're going to look at how Wiser can keep you up to date with your usage. And this comes from the insights page. So here we've essentially got what looks like the output from a smart meter showing you how many boiler hours you've used in total and how much you've saved by using the various smart modes such as eco mode and away mode. At the bottom, there's also the heat report, and this gives you a graphical representation of each of your zones that are on the system. And you can have day view, but you can also go back and look at historically what's been going on. So you can see how well your zones respond to both outside temperature and also how quickly they gain and lose heat.
Thanks for watching this training video, and if you need any more information or resources, head over to our website, DraytonControls.co.uk.